Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. I get the following questions. Richard, can I run rec port heads on my Turbo LS? The answer obviously is yes. Do they make more power? Again, the answer is obviously yes. And we're going to take a look at two perfect examples of why you might want to use rec port heads. Yes, even on a turbo application. But we're going to ask the all important third question. Do you really need to? So the question on the table is, can we run the larger, more powerful rec port heads, the factory rec port heads on a turbo application, or should you? And that's another question we'll get into, but the answer, <laughs> as a spoiler alert, yes, you can. And not only can you, they work very well, as illustrated by a couple of tests that I've run here. First of all, we've got our test motor, and let's take a look. We have... This is an LS3, basically a crate motor. We ran it with an, in a number of configurations. We started off basically with a set of 317 cathedral port heads and we ran the truck intake manifold. We, this thing was equipped with a good camshaft in it because we wanted to demonstrate what the heads would do. So if we, if we have the NA combination making enough power with a good camshaft, we can kind of illustrate what the heads do because I'm going to show you what the head upgrade does and then I'm going to show you what happens when we run boost on that and as we find out, like we normally do, if it works NA, it works under boost and the same thing happens with the rec port heads. So, but we ran this first with a comp 54469-11 cam, which is a 613, 623 lift, a 231, 243 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. And we ran it with a 7.4 inch push rods, pretty normal for that stuff. Inch and seven eighths headers, fast 90 pound injectors because we would be running boost on it. Uh, and I take that back. We had, we didn't run the um, truck intake manifold on it. We were, those were 317 truck heads we started with, and then a fast LSXRT intake manifold, 102 millimeter throttle body, and run with the 317 heads. Our combination produced 551 horsepower and 507 foot pounds of torque. But here's what happened when we replaced the 317 heads and the fast intake manifold with a set of uh, let's see here. So what happened when we put LS3 heads on it? You can see it made more, much more peak power. Peak power was all the way up to 584 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 525 foot-pounds. It made about the same power down low from 4100 and lower as the 317 heads. And please note the 317 heads and, and the rec port heads have about the same chamber size within one or two cc's of each other. Were you to run this comparison with a set of 243 heads, you'd see more power down low with the cathedral port head, but they would never make the power up top that a rec port head does. So now that we've taken a look at what happens when we run the rec port head versus a cathedral port head, we know what happens NA, but what happens when we run boost. Now that we've taken a look at what happens when we go from our 317 cathedral port headed setup on our 6.2 liter, basically an LS3 crate motor with a, a 469 cam in it, and we go to back to basically the LS3 rec port heads, and let's, I just want to verify what intake manifold is on there with the yeah, the LS3, we, we ran the factory LS3 intake manifold. There's not a lot of gain going to a fast intake manifold compared to the factory LS3 on a combination like this. So the LS3 intake manifold and a 92 millimeter throttle body was fine. And like I said, the the truck manifold would have helped the 317 stuff even more uh, than a regular truck manifold, the the fast LSXRT and the 102 millimeter throttle body. So if anything, the 317 had a little bit better going in in terms of intake manifold. But here's what happened. We want to take a look at happened now. What happens when we add boost to these two? And so let's take a look. We'll start off with our 317 heads. Peak power jumped up to 807 horsepower. Yeah, 807 horsepower out here at 67 or 6800. And peak torque checked in at four or 747 foot pounds at 4,900 RPM. This was with a boost curve that varied from on the load in about seven and a half pounds and had a slightly dropping boost curve down to seven pounds. So it only varied by half a pound, which is not very much, but we just had two turbo smart wastegates with seven PSI springs on them. And this is what happened when we ran this combination. So let's go ahead and take a look at our turbo setup. We had a single precision 76 millimeter turbo with a Y pipe 
uh, two exhaust manifolds feeding the white pipe. And then we also ran this, even though we were only running seven pounds, we ran this through a Procharger air to water intercooler with ambient dyno water doing the cooling. We didn't have very high charge temperatures, very low boost. It was not a problem. Timing varied from 17 degrees on the load in up to about 20 degrees. This was run on, I think that this was run on 100 octane uh, race gas so we had plenty of safety margin there with a low boost in the intercooler and a reasonable amount of timing so this is what happened when we ran the 317 at about seven pounds of boost with our combination but here let's take a look now at what happened when we added the ls3 heads all we did was change the heads in the intake manifold we ran the ls3 heads as always with the ls3 intake manifold peak power jumped up to eight eight hundred and twenty six horsepower Peak torque was up to 771 foot-pounds. And it's also important to note that the gains would have been even higher when this was boosted had I made sure that the boost curve was exactly the same. But as it turned out, this thing started out at 7.2 pounds, so down a little bit on the load-in, but dropped down to 6.4 pounds out at the power peak. So we had, uh, you know six or seven tenths of a, of a pound of boost, which could be quite a bit at this range. But at any rate, this shows you that the rec port heads, not only do they make more power than the cathedral port heads, they would also make more power than the 243 or any of the factory LS or cathedral port heads. The rec port head makes more power and that continues to happen when this thing is under boost. Anything that you run that makes more power NA like these heads, like the cylinder head upgrade is definitely going to add more power under boost. Now let's take a look at one more example. Now we've taken a look at one example where we ran boost on successfully on with the rec port heads. Let's take a look at another one. This one actually was a little bit of a unique combination in that it was a D-stroked LS3. So we ran an LS3 kind of in the last one. This is a D-stroked version with a 4.8 crank and custom rods. Let's take a look at this. This is the one that I did. I have a video up on going like to 8,000 RPM with this thing. We basically built a, an LS3 aluminum block, standard bore. We had a 4.8 crank. It was standard, standard. We used a set of 6.3 inch uh, Lenati forge rods and a JE custom piston, uh, a small dome. We ran a set of Trick Flow Gen X 255 LS3 head, 69 cc chambers. It had, a, it had a Moroso oil pan, a remote filter, windage tray, all, all of the good stuff. We ran a Holly high ram on this thing with a single 102 millimeter, you know, front mounted throttle body. And inch and seven eighths headers when we ran it NA, we ran an ATI damper on it. We started off this test with a stock LS9 camshaft because we wanted to do some testing with different camshafts, which we'll take a look at. So we ran this thing as a baseline and then added a turbo to it. And then we did a cam upgrade once we had the turbo on there. But this will just illustrate how well that these rec, any sort of rec port head actually works very well, whether it's a stock set of LS3 or LY6 rec port heads or any of the aftermarket ones, they all work well under boost because really every cylinder head works under boost. So here's what happened when we ran this D-stroke LS3 with the LS9 camshaft, which is not terribly powerful, but it produced peak power of 512 horsepower and 415 foot-pounds of torque. And then to illustrate that, yes, indeed, rec port heads obviously work with boost. Here's what happened when we added boost to it to our LS9 cammed D-stroke LS3. Peak power jumped up by almost 200 horsepower to 701 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 598 foot-pounds, and this was at a peak boost of about, at the horsepower peak, of about uh, eight and a half pounds. Here, although, for and for those guys that are interested, <laughs> there are much better cam choices for this. Here's an example. We, we installed uh, an LJMS or BTR um, stage two turbo cam, if you will, and peak power jumped up to 733 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 620 foot-pounds. And the thing that I want you to take a look at is look at the area from 3,500 to 5,000 or more. You can see that there are big torque gains there, which is interesting for two reasons. One is that the LS9 is notoriously soft and this is the lower part of the curve. It's actually not bad at the top end, but it's notoriously soft down low, which translates into less boost and less power on a turbo application. 
but also the fact that the turbo cam made more power anywhere and what you're not seeing here is that not only did it make more power everywhere but it did so again at a slightly lower boost if we take a look at the boost at the respective power peaks of both of these um, and we didn't run a boost controller on this but the boost was about three tenths of a pound lower with the uh brian tooley racing stage two turbo cam than it was with the with the LS9 camshaft. So more power, lower boost, and more response. Not too hard really to beat an LS9 camshaft for almost anything, but particularly this stage two turbo cam. In fact, if I was doing something like this and wanted to make this kind of power, I would probably pick a smaller cam than both of these, maybe something like this was run a long time ago, something like the Truck Norris cam maybe or something like that. But for guys that want to run rec port heads and a, and a high RAM intake manifold, maybe you would pick an even bigger cam and run it way out to 8,000 or 8,500 like we did in our previous test. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, it's time to cover what we learned in this video and here are two very important things. First thing is obviously, and I think we knew going in or at least you should have if you've done any following in this channel, the rec port heads can be used successfully with a turbo. They work very well. The rec port head makes more power than any of the factory cathedral port heads. And if you get into aftermarket stuff, all of those work too. So you can make more power with less boost with a rec port head than you can with a cathedral port head because they make more power NA. So end of that discussion, but that's not really the end of the discussion. Here's the real discussion is that's not the only question you should be asking yourself. Yes, the rec port head can be used under boost. Yes, it makes more power than a factory cathedral port head. But here's the question. And this is the question I always tell people. Here's what you should be asking yourself when you're talking about a turbo application. The question is, First, how much power do I want to make? Oh, Richard, I want to make a thousand horsepower. I need big rec port heads. No, you don't. <laughs> if you want to make a, I, here's what I tell people. If you want to make a thousand or less horsepower, just use the cylinder heads that you already have. Because there is no factory LS cylinder head that won't make a thousand horsepower under boost. The recipe, as we know, go to the wrecking yard, get a 485360, put springs in it, put a good, decent kind of camshaft in it, and you're already going to be almost more than halfway there to making your 1,000 horsepower, put a 1,000 horsepower turbo on it, and then you can make your 1,000 horsepower. You don't need to upgrade the cylinder heads. You don't need to upgrade the intake manifold. The only thing you really need to upgrade to get you most of the way there, especially on the larger 5.3 and and 6.0 is just put a good camshaft in it. And there are thousands of camshafts that will work and get you to that level so that then you can multiply it and make the power that you want under boost. So the question isn't just, does a rec port head work? Yes. Does it make more power? Yes. The question is, do I even need to upgrade my heads to make the power that I want? I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.